I just bought this 2006 BMW R1200 GS Adventure and in this video I want to chat about the three most common issues found on these old GS's that you have to look out for when you buy the bikes and we'll chat about those issues on this specific bike and whether it popped up. So those three issues are the first one is the ABS or servo pump that activates the front and rear brakes. So this is up to 2006. So if that pump starts giving problems, you either have to get it replaced, which is more expensive than the bike, um, or have it fixed, or you can delete the pump altogether. So that's the first thing. Second thing is the fuel strip stops working, so you can't see the fuel level and the range left, and the lights keep flashing on the dash. And then the third one is oil leaks between the engine and the gearbox. So of those three issues, two of them are present on this bike. And I factored this, this in when I uh, made an offer on the bike. So when I got the bike, I stepped on the rear brakes and it was just gone. So when the servo pump fails, you only have about 10% braking power left. And that's exactly what happened on the rear gear. So as I stepped on the rear brake with my boots, um, there was just no stopping. So even on an uphill, I couldn't keep the bike from rolling back without activating the front, the hand lever. And I rode 2000 kilometers like this to get the bike back home. And the plan was to delete the ABS pump. <laughs> and then this morning when I got on the bike with my normal shoes, I took it for Roadworthy, which it passed immediately. Um, I, <laughs> I stepped on the brakes and it actually worked. So what I found was with the motocross boots, I couldn't um, step far enough down. And you can see here, um, the lever is, has this uh, adjustment there. So I had it in this position and it is quite soft. So all the way there, there's still no activation of the brakes and then it starts. So I definitely have to flush um, the brake system. So what I thought was a huge issue and that I had to delete the ABS and the servo pump is not the case. It's just that I have to flush the, the system. And this bike did stand for, I think about five or six years and it was near the coast. So I think the brake, brake fluid is just not working anymore. So I have to flush the whole system. It's quite a, a process because you have to flush um, the rear brake line. Then you have to flush the front brake line. Then under the tank, you have to remove the whole tank. There's the, the servo pump and it's got six bleeder valves and two reservoirs that you have to flush before the whole system is clean. So I'm going to have to do that and hopefully that fix those, fixes the whole braking issue. So what I thought was a big issue, um, I don't think that is the case with this bike and it's got 76,000 kilometers on it now. Um, so hopefully we can get it sorted without having to delete the ABS, which would be nice, but I don't mind doing it because I'm going to ride a lot of off-road that you don't want the ABS anyways. So the next thing is the fuel strip. So that's another thing that actually was wrong on this bike. So if we switch it on, you'll see the warning. Okay, that's fine. This warning lamp st starts flashing and um, the fuel warning You'll see that at the bottom, it's flashing fuel um, and it shows it's empty. So I, I don't care too much for that. Um, you can use the trip meter and just do your calculations. I never had any issues there. Um, the bike is very, it's fairly light on fuel, about 40, 45 miles per gallon with a 33 liter tank. You can do 500 kilometers or 300 miles before having to stop. So you really <laughs> just, um, use your head and do your calculations, then you don't need that fuel strip to work. The only issue is it is quite annoying because this warning light stays on and the fuel keeps flashing there at the bottom. So I don't think I'm going to fix that. I'm just going to leave that as is, but it is a very common issue and I've heard of people that had that problem and it keeps reappearing as they replace the fuel strip. So I'm just not going to bother with it. I'm just going to leave it like that. Um, and then the third issue was the oil leaks. I don't have that problem. Um, the bike is dry underneath. There's no, no oil leaks there that I can see and it's always dry underneath. So luckily I don't have that issue. So next, let's have a look at some other issues that I have found on the bike that I have to fix um, before we start um, really using it. I, I did not roll for an a off-road riding course and before I do that I want to fix these issues. So let's look at that next. So the first issue that I saw 
when I looked under the bike was this telelever ball joint boot is completely disintegrated. There's nothing left there of that boot. Um, it's just completely perished out. I hope the ball joint is still fine. Um, can't really see without removing it. Um, but I did get replacement, not from BMW, but yeah, so we'll put this in. It doesn't look like a huge um, job and I'll make a video on that. Next issue is I found after about a thousand kilometers of riding, I didn't stop much, but then when I stopped at a garage or at the traffic light, if I activate the clutch with two fingers like this, um, with my other two fingers in the way, the bike almost stalled. Um, we could feel the clutch is still engaging. So I had to either move my hand all the way to the edge there, or I had to use all four fingers, which is just very uncomfortable. So for this, um, what I will do is I'll flush the clutch fluid um, it's, I don't think it's a big job. You'll see the master cylinder or the slave cylinder is under there. So just pop off that, that cap there and then flush the system like you do the brakes um, with new clutch fluid. This is supposed to be a lifetime fluid according to BMW. It's mineral oil, not dot four, so it's not hygroscopic. Um, so it's not supposed to be replaced, but if you ride on the clutch or, or uh, drag the clutch often and with high mileage they say uh, you sometimes have to to flush the system with mineral oil so i'm going to do that and see if that um, increases the feel on the lever and then what i will also do is swap it out for these shortened levers and um, that's adjustable so hopefully that'll make it possible to do um, just use two fingers um, yeah so i'll make a video on that can't think of any other issues that I've found on the bike so far. It just rides like a new bike, even after I think it's about 50 or 45, 50,000 miles, it's still running like new, no issues at all. Um, yeah, so please let me know if there's any videos that you want to see on this bike, stuff that you want to know about these old GSs. This is a 2006, um, and yeah, what an awesome bike. See you next time.